Hey guys, Morning and as I thought, Blizzard announced their first major Hearthstone expansion, adding 120 plus cards, integrating a spectat spectator mode and adding many more features to the game. Now today I want to show some of the cards that have been shown with the expansion and it's really interesting um, to see how they go. Now first here we have the Annoyatron, which is a 1-2 card with Taunt and Divine Shield. Now this card um, is pretty um, weak I would say, it's kind of like a Frostwolf Grunt with Divine Shield. Um, but the problem with, and a bit less damage even, the problem with this card is even though the Archon Square is an actually really good card, a 1-1 one -one with Divine Shield, this one costs one more mana but only has one more health and one twos are usually very very bad cards so I don't think this is a good card at all maybe in a full mech deck it's gonna be useful but that comes later once you see the other mech cards and synergy effects here we have the explosive sheep um, very interesting card it's two mana can be used by any class and deals two damage to all minions it's kind of like an explosive trap as a minion so the disadvantage is it can be silenced but the advantage is it can't be flared so um, although the disadvantage here is probably bigger than the advantage it's a very interesting card um, to counter some aggro decks like the Zulok um, or Hunters and we have to see if some competitive decks can actually integrate this card in them. Now in Arena this card is probably going to be pretty weak but in Constructed to counter the um, aggro meta it's probably going to be a very decent card. Then here and this is the first minion where I want to talk about something. Now this is a pillar of the sky golem. In itself the card isn't really special. It's a 6-4 for 6 mana compared to an Baldurfist Ogre um, which is a 6-7. It's substantially worse as a card itself. The death rattle effect is interesting. It summons a random 4 cost minion. Now this could be something pretty bad um, or it could be something like a chill wind knight. Children DD. So um, it's kind of like a bit risky, but is this card good in itself? I don't think so. I mean, if you get to late game, you want cards that have an immediate effect. This card has no immediate effect. On top of that, it's RNG. You can, it's like gambling. If you are lucky, you get a good four mana cost. Um, and another thing is that late in the game, it doesn't really matter if you get a four mana cost minion out. And big um, drawback from this card is it can be silenced. So the opponent usually finds a way to deal with this card and it's not that good in itself. But what I'm talking about is the random effects. Now we've probably seen in the next few cards that there are a lot of things that add a um, substantial increase of RNG to Hearthstone. Um, here's one that's also pretty interesting, the Enhanced or Mechano. Battlegrad gives your other minions Wind Fury, Taunt or Divine Shield at random. Now what this card does, um, let's assume a situation where you have full board control with 5 minions. You play this card and then this card actually to each of those 5 minions gives either Wind Fury, Taunt or Divine Shield. So um, it could be that all 5 of them get Wind Fury but more like or what's probably going to be is uh, one is going to get Wind Fury, the next is going to get Taunt and there's a Divine Shield and so on. Now this card helps you, like if you're already winning, if you already got that strong board control, this card helps you to win even faster. But the drawback of this card is, if you are behind, this card does absolutely nothing, if you have no board, it's a free 2 for 4 mana, which you can usually get with 2 mana. So again, in itself this card is rather weak, I don't think it's going to be useful in many arena decks, but in constructed however, in certain decks where you get a lot of early minions out, like a Zoo Warlock for example, and then you have 5 minions on the board and then top it up with the Enhanced Mechano, um, that might be really huge. Um, could also be used um, in cases with like Snake Trap or Unleash the Hounds for Hunter, I mean, free snakes or doggies don't really matter much usually, but if they get Wind Fury and then you buff them somehow, uh, they get taunt, it's really going to be annoying for the opponent. Um, unstable portal, another RNG card, add a random minion to your hand. It costs free less. <laughs> it's kind of like an improved version of Farsight. Um, I don't know what to think about this card. Um, it, again, it's very much RNG. Like it's you could you could win the lottery with it and get a um, Deathwing or whatever, or you could lose it and get a engineer. It really hard to say. Now this is my favorite card. Now you know my love for uh, probabilities and bombers, and this is the improved version of the mad bomber, the daddy, the madder bomber. Now he is pretty much a mad bomber, which deals six damage randomly split between all other characters. So it could be um, if you are Reynard or really unlucky that you have this a lot of minions on the board, opponents at one HP, 
and you play the meta bomber and six times to your own face <laughs> gg um but yeah um i kind of like this card um i know a lot of people hate the rng and say more rng is always worse but the thing is um this is about calculating probability it's about um not just um playing the card but also before you play the card how am i gonna trade before i play it how can i really maximize um, the best outcome. I'm sure in the end effect it's going to be affected by RNG, where the bombs land, but you can prepare it so that if you would be, if you would have that one situation in Hearthstone, let's say a thousand times, um, you could, uh, the, the player who always does the best things um, would over those thousand games be much better than a player who randomly does things. Now in one game, the player who randomly trades with the board and plays this card and then suddenly kills, let's say, um, a Chivin Yedi on a full board immediately with the Meta Bomber um, might make might just win because of that one play there, but it's the wrong play. You should have just traded differently and so on. And um, it adds an interesting aspect to the game because it's all going to be more about probability, kind of like in poker. In poker, um, let's say um, you have Ace Ace um, pre flop and you decide to raise and go all in, and the other guy has, let's say, two tens. And then he top tags a third ten and beats you. Now this doesn't mean that you made the wrong play. And if those, if the same play, the same scenario will continue, let's say a thousand times, eventually you would win a lot of money if you just play your aces and he always plays his tens. But in that one situation, it was just unlucky. And that's what a lot of people have to consider with those RNG cards. That RNG is not necessarily bad. It is bad in a single game. But if you play the game long enough to have enough games under your belt. Um, the RNG is eventually going to even out and the player who makes the better decision is going to be mo the more successful player. Cockmaster. Cockmaster has two attack while you have a mech. Um, I don't know. I mean, maybe in some rush decks this could be useful. I don't think it's... I mean, arena is totally useless because in arena you can't really construct a mech deck. Um, it would be too RNG, kind of like constructing a Murloc deck in arena right now. But in constructing maybe in like a... Let's call it mech zoo with... 20 mech um, minions, it has its place. But I don't think this card is going to be too significant. It's also just a normal card. Valence Chosen, give a minion plus 2 plus 4 and spell damage plus 1. It's a slightly improved version of Mark of the Wild, um, but costs more, so I don't think it's going to be that great. Very situational, but I think in general this is a rather weak card. Dr. Boom, now we go, legendary, summon two 1-1 one, one doom boom bots. And I'm gonna see later, I mean, a boom bot is something that if it dies as death rattle, it does random damage to something. So it has a very strong effect. And I'm gonna talk about this legendary again when I get to the boom bots. Um, but yeah, it's again very RNG, but probably fits the character lore-wise, Dr. Boom. Um, but it's definitely interesting. Then here we have, okay, we already had all of those. Here we have, okay, this is new. Blink Drone 3000. Battle Cry equip a random weapon for each player. Again, this is completely RNG. Now, this card I don't think has any use because that's really where the RNG is just stupid. Now, you play a minion, I mean, a 3 4 for 5 is really, really weak. So, this is kind of like a desperation minion or more like a gimmick minion. This is actually even a legendary. I would never pick this because, um, the only situation where this would be a good play is if you are so much behind that the only way to win, let's say the opponent has a full board and has 6 HP and you are at 1 HP. And the only chance to win would be to play this card and get a Gore Howl and then do 7 damage to his face. Um, but yeah, again, this is just stupid RNG in my opinion because maybe you, you play this card and you already play a really, really bad and weak minion. Considering that it's a legendary, I mean a 3-4 for a legendary and 5 mana cost. And then you get a justice weapon, a 1-1, one, one, and the opponent gets, let's say, an Arcanite Reap or a Gohar. You just own yourself with that, and that has nothing to do with, like, strategic thinking. This is just stupid RNG that I don't really feel fits into the game. And I think Blizzard, instead of, like, trying to force 120 cards into the game, maybe they should just, like, add less cards but more balance than higher quality cards with better effects or better things than just mindless RNG, but whatever. Um, another thing I'm going to add here is, um, even though those cards, most of them look pretty crazy, 
This is just like Blizzard is showing us the most interesting cards in the sneak preview. They're showing us 25, 30 cards have been data mined so far out of 120. So obviously they're going to show those cards and not the cards that are like Iron Fur, Grizzly or whatever, just blank cards. Bomb Blobber. Deal 4 damage to a random enemy minion. Battle cry. A 5-3-3 is free. usually not worth playing and the effect... Um, the effect is situational. I mean... It's not going to be an arena pick. Where this card is going to fit. Um, probably interesting. I mean, 4 damage is not enough. Because most of the 4 drops, by the time this would be um, played, are, or a lot of them are with 5 HP, like a chill win. So it's just not enough to kill them. If the battle cry. Then if the disadvantage of RNG, like if there's a 1-1 one, one or 2-1 one next to it, you hit the wrong minion, you pretty much just wasted your turn. So I don't think this card is going to get too much play. If it would be 5 more damage, it would probably be OP, but with 4 damage, I think it's just fine. Probably even a bit too weak. Boombot was with the legendary before. Legendary is 7 mana, remember? Summon 2 Boombot. So you get for 7 mana, you get a 7-7 seven, seven legendary. That's good. Plus 2 Boombots, which deal 1 to 4 damage to random enemy. Now, this legendary, I think, is very well balanced. Um, again, you have the small iron chief, the Boombots, because random enemy. Um, but I think it's pretty balanced because usually that late into the game, 7 plus mana, you want to play cards with an immediate effect. You want to play that Alexstrasza that heals you or deals damage immediately. You want to play the Grommash that finishes something. You want to play the Ragnaros that does 8 damage to either face or minion. But this doesn't do something directly. It kind of like plays a decent legendary, but 7-7 seven, seven dies to a lot of cards like Giants or a lot of cards actually 8-8. Eight, eight. Also dies to the Venture Co. Um, but the Boom Bots add some nice mechanic to it because you have two death rattles. So at best one is going to be silenced, but the other one is still going to trigger off. And you're usually going to be able to kill it off next turn and then um, have some impact on the board. So I think this is a very good legendary. I like this card a lot. And I think a lot of other cards should have been designed with that philosophy. Flame Cannon. 2 mana, 4 damage to a random minion. Again, um, this is like a Frostbolt with more damage, but a random effect. Um, add some RNG to the game. Don't know how I should think about this now. Blizzard certainly has thoughts with adding all those RNG cards into the game. They want to make the game more fun or accessible for the majority of the player base. Now, if you see, look at Hearthstone, there's only 0.5% Legend players. Um, I know... On my channel or on Twitch, um, the percentage is higher, but overall it's only 0.5%. And um, those are the players that really complain about such cards. And I think it's justified because, let's say in a tournament, if this um, hits or targets a 1-1, then it's really bad. But if it actually targets, let's say, something with 4 mana, strong minion, let's say a Misha, um, the bear animal companion from the hunter then it's really really good um the card itself i don't think is strong enough to fit into many tournament decks so i don't think there's a problem here but it's just if they have the opportunity to design 120 cards and buy something like that all right goblin blast mage if you control a mech deal four damage randomly split among enemy characters so if you have one mech minion on the board like the mech warper here that should be pretty easy to achieve at turn four then you deal 4 damage, random spit among enemy cards. This is a really strong card. Now, a 5-4 for 4 is not bad at all. It's like a Brewmaster. A Brewmaster and the Battle Cry, in my opinion, is better than a Brewmaster. Of course, both are situational. If the opponent is an empty board, then you get a Brewmaster out, which is usually pretty, still pretty good. It's not an optimal turn 4 play, but it's a decent play. It's a 5-4, and Battle Cry is not going to be utilized. But if you have that mech, then this is going to be completely crazy because if the opponent has minions on the board this might directly kill it off this is like better than the mad bomber because it doesn't target your own minions just enemies and if the opponent doesn't have anything then it's four damage to the face which gives you a lot of tempo um meta bomber we already had this mech warper your max cost one less it's kind of like a version of what's it called i don't remember the name Pine Size Summoner, there we go. Um, it's actually a Pine Size Summoner with more HP. Interesting that they actually make the 
Max specifically stronger, but yeah. Um, piloted Sky Golem, we had this. Recombinator, that's new. Transform a friendly minion into a random minion with the same cost. <laughs> okay, that's again just for the fun. Um, could be interesting in some decks actually. Could be very interesting for the meta as well. I mean, there are some cards that have substantially better stats than what they cost. For example, um, Millhouse Mana Storm, I think is a 4 4 for 2. So you could like coin, turn 1, coin Millhouse Mana Storm. Or no, turn 1, you coin any random 2 drop. Let's say an engineer, and then turn 2, you play this and turn the engineer <laughs> into a. Uh, Milos Malestorm. But now when I think about this, this is actually very situational. It's not really easy to pull it off. Um, and you destroy something on your board to get something else. And it says random minion, so it's probably not even a card that you have in your decks, which makes it even less meaningful. So yeah, overall now I have to rethink this card. It's not that great. Especially if it says into a random minion. It doesn't say into a random minion from your deck or from your cards. So yeah. Pretty bad. Shrink Master. And I think this is a priest only card, and this fits the priest for a very, very reason. Give a minion minion minus to attack this turn. Wow. This is like probably one of the strongest cards, especially in constructed, because first, what's the problem of priests in constructed? Now, the problem of priests is four mana minions. Because then they can't paint it and they can't death it, and they also can't cabal it. But with this, they can either, for example, Death a minion with 5 attack, they can death the Doom Guard. Ah, no, not death. Um, let's say there's a Chilvent Yeti on the board, and you use this, and then you can shadow a pain the Chilvent Yeti. Or, what you could also do is you could use this on a Chilvent Yeti, and then follow it up with a Cabal Shadow Priest, taking the Chilvent Yeti, and after you end the turn, the Chilvent Yeti actually goes back to a 4 5 again, but now it's under your control. So, this is pretty ridiculous. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how it works out. But yeah, I don't have... The card probably is going to be um, changed before it goes live. So maybe a small nerf, make it a 2-2 two -two or make it minus one attack. I don't know yet. Sneeds old Shredder. Death Shredder summon a random legendary minion. This is completely garbage because um, you play in 5-7 for 8. Now that late into the game to play a card like this, 5-7 is nothing. Compared to what the opponent is going to throw at you, like Ragnaros or Alexstrasza or Grommash or Scenarios or whatever. So this card has like absolutely no immediate effect, no presence. And the death rattle effect is completely randomized. Now summon a random legendary minion. And then you get the uh, net pagel out there. Yeah, it's going to save you. Um, this card probably needs to be changed as well now to make it meaningful. If they want to stick to the mechanic, which um, is decent and fun. But probably not good enough for Constructed, they could at least make it summon a random legendary minion with a cost of 5 or more, 6 or more, to make it more meaningful. Because a lot, well, most of the legendaries are actually pretty small cards, and that late into the game, if you already play such a handicapped minion, a 5, 7, for 8, then you should at least get a good legendary. Machineer Thermal Block. This is a lot of fun. Whenever an enemy minion dies, summon a Leper Gnome. Now, with this one... Um, Again, it's situational. I think it costs too much. 9 mana is a lot, and then it's only 7 HP, which means it dies to a lot. Um, but the, the, the fact is really cool now. Let's say the opponent has a lot on the board. You play this, and you manage to kill some. Um, those Leper Gnomes gonna overwhelm him. But I really can't really think about anything where this could be useful, because the problem is... Um, actually, it's good now. Uh, well, it's another card that makes you win harder if you're already winning. Now let's say you have board control, or the board is even. You have three minions on the board, the opponent has three minions on the board, and it's turn nine for you. And then you can play the Machineer Thermal Plug, and let's say kill one or two or three of the opponent minions, and then immediately get those Leper Gnomes, and then it's pretty much GG. But overall I think this card is too late. It would be probably more fun if it would be like a six or seven mana cost card. But yeah. Micro Machine, at the start of each turn, gain plus one attack. Um, pretty much you play this on turn two, and if it doesn't get killed, it's a free two. And then it keeps getting stronger and stronger. Now, I could see this card being useful in decks like 
priest maybe because with a priest you can buff the hp as well give it some health and it keeps getting stronger and stronger kind of like a guru uh, small mini version now people compare it with shade of naxxramas but shade of naxxramas only works for the own turn but this is each turn so this this snowballs a lot faster um this card of kings also pretty nasty if it doesn't get removed um overall i don't think it's too strong it can be counter pretty well with any removal and I don't think people are gonna ignore a micro machine. It's gonna be kinda like the new knife juggler. If there's a micro machine on the board, kill it. Or it's gonna be too strong in the after a few turns. Mimiron's head. Um this one is really interesting. Now at the start of a turn, if you have at least three max, destroy them all and form Voltron. And Voltron. And the thing with this card is um a four five for five is decent, not super strong. But again, this is a card that helps you win like incredibly strong if you are already winning. Now, if you have three max on the board, it means you have full board control at turn five. So it means you are already winning. And then you play this and it's pretty much, okay, now it's over. But the thing is, this card doesn't help you when you're behind. When you're behind, it's just a four or five for five. Um, have to see more of the cards. Like how good are the cards that haven't been announced yet that are mech cards? Like are those going to be three, three for two mana or whatever, or just two, two? We have to see that. But yeah, more about Voltron, it's very fun, legendary, um, later. Pillar that Shredder, summon a random 2 cost minion for 4 free. Um, this one is actually better than the one before, the higher cost one, because a 4 free for a 4... Mm, it's, actually, it's actually pretty bad. And then it can be silenced and it's just a 2 cost minion. Actually this card also isn't that great. Some people might disagree with me here, but... Doesn't look too great for me. Now here we have Voltron. I don't want to wait with this. Um, it's pretty much the super minion. Charge, Mega Wind Fury. Can attack four times a turn. <laughs> Imagine if you buff this with one or two rock fighters and just go over the face. Wow. Um, but yeah, um, while this seems completely OP and broken on paper first, um, Mimiron, you need to have three mechs on the board, so this is where you're going to see play and just compared with existing cards that have similar mechanics. For example, Tadius. Now, Tadius only gets, is a sick card right now, but he only gets into play if both Fuigen and Stalag died. And if bo both of those died, it rarely happens in Constructed, and if it happens, it's probably too late, so um, I don't think this is going to happen a lot, but if you get the Vulture now, it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, also interesting is going to be the new game modes, if they add any, um, I think those cards fit very well in a new game mode where I can just like play random shit or experiment or get random decks that you can play against others and then it's all going to be okay. We, have all the, we all have those random decks, how do we make the best use out of them? I think that's really the point of the expansion, there needs to be a new game mode where you can use those decks because in Arena they're all too situational, in Constructed again they're too situational and add a lot of RNG to it as well. Um, but in the new mode where let's say I get a random deck and another get, one gets a random deck and this could even be with ranking now who plays the best of those random decks after let's say a thousand games it's just a random idea I just get into my head right now spider tank and this already shows what I was talking about before it's a free 4 mech for free mana this is insane now there are a few other free 4 cards like that are pretty good like the dark cultist for a priest but most of the frees are only free free or some are even free too. Um, but I think overall this is a pretty decent card, especially if you consider the synergy effects with the other cards. Like having three of those on the board and then you play Mimiron and so on. I think the one card was when you have one, then you do damage. Uh, there. If you control a mech, deal four damage randomly split among enemy characters. So definitely a decent a neutral minion. Do you have anything left? Um, there's one French card that I actually understand, but not all of them. Okay, this is interesting, spare parts, one minion um, gives the spare parts and those are for one mana cost things that give taunt, freeze minion, pretty much all of this in the game already, um, just for as a spare part. And it's interesting because um, good ones are for example the whirling blades give plus one attack. Could be really good with something with Wind Fuel, for example, and Reversing Switch, which is pretty much um, the Crazed Alchemist in a one mana drop version without a minion. Time Rewind also good with things like Charge, so all of those spare parts have their use. 
Ogre of War Warmar. This is a fun card. 50% chance to attack the wrong enemy. Um, this is actually a mechanic that I like, um, even though it's RNG again, but it just is so much fun now. You try to finish off the opponent, let's say he's at 4 HP. You are at 4 HP and there's some videos on the board and then, then you wanna think, am I gonna risk it? Am I gonna attack him with that and risk killing myself? I don't know, that's not how it's gonna work. You can only attack the wrong enemy, but still that if the opponent, for example, has a Molten Channel board and he has 4 HP himself on the hero, then, and you attack the hero, it could be that you attack the hero successfully, or 50% chance you run through the Molten Channel and kill yourself doing that. So, it's a pretty interesting card. Um, could go wrong, but um, I don't think it's going to be see too much play. I mean, it's a 3 mana 4-2. That's actually not really that good. It depends on is this card neutral, or is it for a warrior, or is it for a special class. Uh, maybe there's going to be a he new hero. I mean, there's still... Um, for the 70, there are still a lot of cards that need to be announced. 75 cards left, so maybe it is going to be a new hero deck. I don't think there's going to be 75 neutral cards. They have to be really creative for that, but yeah, we'll see. And last card I wanted to show was a spectator client here. Well, yeah, last card is not here, but maybe it was there. This here. This is a 12 mana card. Um, but it costs one less for each card the opponent has in their hand. So this is pretty much a new counter to Handlock. Handlock is, has been very, very strong consistently in all the tournaments and seasons. And it's finally counter to it. If the Handlock, like, for example, has nine cards, this is going to cost three. And then you have a 8-8 eight, eight for free mana on the board. Enjoy that Handlock. And that was my short review of the cards and what I think about them, what I think about the RNG elements. Mm. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm definitely going to check the expansion out. I'm also going to make sure that hopefully I can stream again because I really miss it. But I'm going to make another update about this um, later this week. And yeah, hope you guys had some fun. Um, for the next few days, I have a bit more time now because I just finished some exams. So I'm going to try to upload one or two videos a day. And yeah, stay tuned. Thanks for watching. I'll be back.